Now I'm going to attach these potentiometers right here, connected to this big gear. And then another one right here. I don't know how tall your drawer sliders are, so I made this adjustable. I like the quote, if you can't make it perfect, make it adjustable. This is adjustable forward and backwards to set your zero position, and it's also adjustable up and down with this little gear thing over here. Yeah, I'm going to redesign this part because I was tightening the nut on and it broke off, which is not the desired result. Oops. I kind of thought that would happen, but <laughs> uh, that was only until after I started the print. And you know, sunk cost fallacy. So I put on this pitch rack and gear rack and pinion right here I think that's what it's called and it really seems to be working well now I just have to reprint this part I think I'll reprint this part later and kind of figure it out there's a lot of variables in this I forgot something uh, this part right here has a set screw into it I didn't use it because I am already going to reprint this piece, but if you way overestimate your size, you can basically put a set screw and screw the um, whatever you call it in. And you can screw the pin of your potentiometer in super tight, so that's pretty nice. Um, it would be a little off center if it's like way off, but it shouldn't matter too much. So yeah, there's a set screw right here. And there's your um, quick disconnect with a Clico right here. Hopefully this all works well. I'm actually really proud of this design. It's so simple. Um, way more simple than my like 10 parts. You can see part of the old version next to the new version. It's comically larger. With this, you want this super tight right after you know that this gear is on correctly. So put the gear on. Turn your potentiometer all the way right, back off maybe like 25 degrees so that you don't hit the potentiometer's hard stop when you pull all the way back. And when you push forward, the gear should turn easily. This isn't meshing well. I set the height wrong, and over here, it's not even engaging. Part of this is due to the fact that my yoke is a little flimsy right now. I need to replace one of the rollers. Uh, but you can always recenter it, push it all the way left, back it off a little, and retry. I tried to save this potentiometer because I really didn't want to have to re-solder everything, but I don't think that's a possibility. Yeah. But on the bright side, you can see how potentiometers work. There's a little wiper there that has a variable resistance and some of the pins go through there and stuff and that's how it changes resistance. So I tightened on the potentiometer like this and now we just place it in here, solder it up and we're ready to go. Center the yoke up here, press it in and you can use the set screw on the bottom uh, by like going all the way left and unscrewing this and using the set screw on the bottom. I'm not going to because mine is a press fit and we'll get there when we get there. So now we can test just gently that it goes all the way left and all the way right. It's not hitting a hard stop. We know that. That's great. So now we can screw it in. A king hair just flew over my house. It was super cool. All right, uh, we're, we're going to drill it in. Not too deep though. Oh, I struck gold. And by gold I mean this drawer slider that costed too much. Now we can see it's stable. Wonderful. And I like, and make sure when you put this wheel on, you put it right in front of this so that you don't have any collisions. So 
So now I just gotta resolder it. Resolder, sorry. I learned my lesson. If you feel like something is gonna break, it usually will. These have a these have a great locking mechanism that we don't want at all. So we can expand the tabs and kind of get rid of that. It's only with this one right here. This gets rid of the locking mechanism. It's only slightly intact now. It's important to check everything is square. You don't want any binding when you push it out and, or in. Uh, that's kind of how you want it to be square. So you want it square with this panel uh, and that'll basically make sure it's all good to go. It's more important, I think, to have these parallel than to have it square with the panel. So if you, there's any way to check parallel, uh, make sure to check parallel. I guess you could just measure it. <laughs> but uh, really we do want it square with the panel so it doesn't go in at a weird angle. All right, I have my square to make sure it's square. And then I can check that it's parallel um, by measuring. 20 inches and 20 inches, on the money. That's what people say, I think. One of the things we want is to draw an imaginary line, or a real line, I don't know, I don't care, uh, from here all the way down. So if we put like a giant yardstick, this wouldn't protrude like this, because each of these sections need to be enclosed within 24 inches by 48 inches. That's the minimum optimized amount I can get downstairs. So now we can uh, screw this on. I find it easiest to just measure the distance from panel because that'll make sure that it's squared to make sure it's equal with this one. You want to make sure it's at least three inches because you want your three inches of um, spacing for instruments and stuff. Leave it to me to over-engineer a solution where I have it over here, measure from the panel to here, uh, then calibrate it, then measure again both sides, make sure it's right. But if I pull it all the way out, I don't have to make sure to align these things to measure each area from here to here and here to here. I can just pull it all the way out. And I know that they're the exact same manufactured drawer sliders, so I can just measure whatever this distance is. Five and a half inches. I don't actually need to even know that, because I can set it up here too, and then drill it from the underside. All right, we finally got a smooth system working on the controls. I lowered this pitch pinion gear a little bit and it meshes a lot better. And I added these squares on the end so that this wouldn't uh, rotate because it can uh, become non-parallel. You can see it a little here. That would be fixed if I pushed this back a little bit, which I will in the future before I cut the yokes. Um, but I'm just gonna have them working with my yokes for now. I kind of tied these into a lazy knot and that just makes a rubber band. I think this is about like two feet of bungee cord and then I'm going to put it over on the panel. Then I can put it on the yoke right about here and see it function. I can actually just unscrew this screw right here because it lines up perfectly and have that. How convenient. Now if we hook it up, it basically wants to return to center. There is kind of a like 
harmonic motion, I guess, is really hard to perfect because there's so much momentum, it goes past it and then goes back to center and then it kind of jitters. So like, you can see it, it passes and goes back, but it does return to center. It's much better than no return to center, which I've flown with. It's not very fun. Actually it is, because it's challenging. Okay, so this works great, but this doesn't really. We have a single rubber band right here that I just put on. Not gonna do the trick. You know what else won't do the trick? Arson. Thank you everyone so much for watching, and thank you so much for the people who make these videos possible to make. If you're new to the channel and want to learn more, you can look at this Cessna 172 playlist, and I hope you have a fantabulous rest of your day. Have a good one.